Everybody, welcome back to Video Game So Terror, going to continue the series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And today we have a video that's a long time coming. You guys keep asking for it. It took me a minute to get around to it. But it is the Amiga Core Setup Guide Review Tips and Tricks and all the different settings you're going to want to use. And a big thanks to Lemmy. He helped me out with this video, mostly by giving me some games to play, because I am not ultra familiar with the Amiga library, but I do know some games on it, and some games I've been playing with this core and I love. Do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, but let's get right into it. I will leave a link to the Mega AGS files below, but this is what you're going to want to download. You're going to see that there are different build dates, so go ahead and get the 6-6-2022 build. And you can click View Contents to see what's in there, but we'll go over them in a minute. A lot of different demo folders, but the important files are the games, the AGS.HDF, that's a virtual hard drive image, and then some of the other Kickstart ROMs, because there's more than one way to skin an Amiga cat. But you'll see here, if we go into that folder that we've unpacked, there's going to be a README. We'll get to that in a moment, because you do want to read it. I'll talk about it in a little bit. But there's a config folder with these five mini MIG configuration files. You're going to want to copy those over to the config folder on your Mr. FPGA data device. You'll see here, if I go into config, you're not going to create a separate folder, you're just going to paste them in right here. So when you do that, you should see those five mini MIG files in the folder. Go ahead and just check to make sure everything's come over correctly. But if you have those five files, you're good for config, just match them to the download. Now under games, you're going to see there's an Amiga folder. Click into that, you'll see the different Kickstart ROMs, you'll see the save hard drive image. We'll talk about how to save games later on in the video. And you'll see that mega AGS.HDF, that's the large hard drive. But all of these folders right here, you want to bring over to Mr. If you go into the demos, you'll see all the different Amiga demos you can play. People have done crazy things with the hardware. Don't copy this folder into Amiga, that would be a mistake. You want to go into the Amiga folder, highlight all of these files right here, and just copy them, and then you'll go back over to the Mr. Data card, however you want to access it. I recommend not FTP, sometimes it can be a problem, that's just me. And you'll see there's an Amiga folder right here. I don't want to use this card, so I'm not going to hit paste, but just paste everything there. Go ahead and let it load up. It'll take some minutes because it's almost eight gigabytes. And if you've followed all my directions from here and you load that mini MIG core, you're gonna see Amiga on your screen. And that is the goal that we are going for here, getting you guys to play Amiga. And this setup guide has definitely been good to wait on because when I first played around with Amiga, it was not this streamlined. The Amiga community, Lemmy and his friends have gotten this to a great situation. Now remember, the Amiga did exist in the US, but it is primarily, at least in my understanding, more of a PAL region thing. Some games will launch with an option to have a 50 hertz or 60 hertz output. And if you go back to that readme file, it's going to show you all the settings that those config files articulate, but it's also going to talk about setting up your Mr. INI for both NTSC and PAL settings. That is what's recommended, so go ahead and make sure you do that. There's a lot of stuff to read in here, including the fact that you can get to the Amiga OS by hitting escape on a keyboard. If you want to see that, I'll make a separate video. But you will see this section about video modes and how everything works. If you want to research any of this, use that readme file in the Mega AGS download. For my money, everything just worked when I launched it, but definitely research that document and read it. There's some interesting things in there, some I'll go over, some that are esoteric you can check out on your own end. But if you've done everything correctly up until this point in time, you can start playing Amiga games. And a lot of these games are my first or second time ever playing them. But I will say the Amiga has some great music and let me turn me on to this because he knows I like doing music segments. So go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds and I'll come back and teach you guys more.
Lemmy was not wrong, that soundtrack is great, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different settings we can articulate. You'll see that this is running based on an Amiga 1200, so you're going to see that CPU is a Motorola 68020. You can switch that down to a 6800, I do not recommend doing so. All of the settings that are configured from those files you come down with work the best. So honestly, that D cache you can turn on for better performance, but I've been told that that can cause some incompatibilities and issues, so I recommend leaving everything like you find it when you launch the core. Now, the aspect ratio is quite interesting. You have original and full screen, and the game looks great in both, so you can be subjective about this, partially because I've never played this game before, so hey, it looks great in both aspects to me. You can always research the game you're playing and see what looks good. Now, when you first launch this core, that hard drive image is going to come up and you're going to have all these different options as to select things. you got some best of lists, genre lists, it's going to kind of delineate the games. Starting with the best 100 is probably a pretty good place if you've never played Amiga. It has a lot of things like Beneath a Steel Sky there, one of the best adventure games I played that was not made by LucasArts or Sierra. Just go ahead and select a game and you'll see here I've changed the aspect ratio, something like Alien Breed. You're going to get the workbench screen, it's going to be there for about 10 to 15 seconds seconds but then you're going to get right into the game and you're going to be able to play so long as you've calibrated your controls and bind the keys and I'll go over that in just a second but Alien Breed another great game kind of has some Sega 16 core vibes to it and some of those Sega games but again this is a great game part of this video is me recommending things because you either love and know everything about Amiga and don't need to watch this video or you don't know anything about it like I said just make sure you configure the mini mic buttons and a lot of games you use up for jump you can set another key to jump if you just set an alternative binding you can leave one key blank if you want go to the readme file it explains it more in depth but i don't really mind up to jump in some games it feels okay but your mileage may vary but once you've done all of these things you're basically playing an amiga and that's awesome one of the games that i always wanted to play on amiga and never got a chance to until i started shooting this video is the chaos engine and i will say this game looks spectacular it's got those amiga vibes and the graphical art style that if you're familiar with amiga you probably know about but if you've seen screenshots you're going to see it but this game is incredible and it is running to my eye and to my hand perfectly on this core but i will say another spectacular example of music so go ahead and enjoy for 35 seconds and I'll come back and teach you more stuff. Just love that soundtrack, and of course, Turrican 2 is on the Amiga as well, and that's probably one of those games you're going to see on every top 10 Amiga game list of all time, and it is there for a reason. It is quite a good game, and that's the best thing about what the Amiga community has done with this Mega AGS pack. There's pretty much not anything that you're going to be missing on it. Every single game you're going to want to play and a bunch of games you've never heard of before and you're going to try out are going to be available on this package. Now a note about saving. You can't just save in a normal manner even if the game says it is saving. You have to quit out of the game in a certain function. And if you see off the top with the Mega AGS menus, you're going to see an options mode right here. There's going to be different quick keys that you can select. If you do not quit the game with the quick key, and you'll see there's one option binding left trigger, right trigger, and pause. That's the one I recommend using. The game just will not save. It'll say that it's saving, but if you don't quit it correctly, it's not going to write to that secondary HDF for the Amiga AGS saves. So if you notice that your saves are not persisting, it's because you're quitting the game incorrectly. Don't just reset the core to get back to that menu. But hey, it's got James Pond too. I remember loving this game on the Sega Genesis as a kid, or maybe it was James Pond 3, and seeing it in motion again is a lot of fun. Now I will say my memory of James Pond is much better 
than the reality of playing it right here and maybe I just should have left that memory alone but hey if you've never played James Pond and you want to see a fish run around on his fins in a platformer you can 100% do that with the Amiga Corn. it's fun to get this nostalgia going now one game that I can highly recommend that I beat more than once on different consoles is Flashback this game is just legit amazing it doesn't look like much in motion it's a very slow game that's kind of like a puzzle action platformer but I can't recommend enough that you check this game out. I do still have a few things to teach you, but I want to talk about different fun games on the Amiga, the ones that I do know and the ones that I discovered while recording this video. But honestly, this is a game that pretty much every retro gaming fan should play because this was something special back in the day. And you start out in this jungle, but trust me, the game gets more colorful, gets more interesting, it has a really big cyberpunk vibe to it. So if you've never played Flashback before, the Amiga version is an excellent version that you should 100% check out. Now another game I remember from back in the day, and again that my nostalgia was, you know, kind of right, is Zool. I don't know how this game has so many sponsorships, Chupa Chups, not something we really get in the US, was all over Zool back in the day. But this is basically quintessential Amiga as far as I know it. There's just certain games that you think of when you think of Amiga, and there's certain graphical styles you think of when you think of European game developers. And honestly, this thing is so European, you even have a snooker game. Now, how do you play snooker? I have no idea whatsoever. I know how to play pool and that's about it. But this is one of the best games on the Amiga according to lists and if you are a snooker fan, well then you can get snookered off this which means something completely different in the US but hey. Another game that I was very interested to try out was Gods. I do not know what the hell those guys are there, they look like asses running around on their hands but it is a very visually impressive game and I'm looking into getting more into it. But there's just so much fun to be had on Amiga. There's shmups, there's platformers, there's racing games, everything like that. This has a huge library and the Mega AGS pack is going to be great. If for some strange reason you do want to use a different virtual hard drive, you will see in the drive system there's a primary master fixed hard drive and a primary slave fixed hard drive. The slave is going to be for those saves and the primary is going to be the Mega AGS, but if you want to for some reason load up a different HDF file, this is where you're going to do it. But honestly, I don't recommend doing that because the Mega AGS pack has everything you want to play. And the Chaos Machine to me is the winner of this video. I absolutely love this game and I plan on finishing it. But if you follow the directions in this video, you will get the Amiga running on your mister. You'll know how to select games, you'll know how to calibrate those controls, you'll know how to deal with all the different video modes. But trust me, read that readme.txt file, it is quite useful. But yeah, that's the Amiga. If you never played it, now you can. See you next time. Bye bye.